Are you an airplane owner? You wonder if you can do your own oil change or if you can check and see if there's something in your fuel line like water or sugar, free the sediment. Well, we're going to be talking about what you can be doing to be putting maintenance into your own aircraft in the hangar. I used to be a well-respected member of the aviation community, and then I started flying a Cirrus and that changed. Oh, well, that was great until the engine quit. And all of a sudden I see these explosions and these trees exploding. I'm walking away a better pilot because of this discussion. Hello and welcome to In the Hangar. I'm Dan Milliken at Off.Taking. And I'm Christy Wong at Pilot Christy. And we're going to be talking about what you can do as an owner to, uh, to do preventive maintenance and, and regular maintenance for your aircraft. We're joined by uh, Bill Goble. Again, thank you, Bill, for coming out and joining us. So, Bill, uh, there's a lot of rules of what we can do with our airplanes and uh, as owners. Sure. And so let's, let's talk about what can I do as an owner? What can Chrissy do as an owner of her plane? Actually, there's a lot of rules for things you shouldn't be doing if you want to really know the truth. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense? Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. But uh, no, there are a lot of things that you can do. It's called preventive maintenance in, a, in the FAA, okay, under 14 CFR. Part 43, Appendix A, it, it, there's an absolute list of things you can do. Okay, now, just because you can change a tire doesn't mean you should be changing a tire or you're properly prepared for changing a tire. So some of the things I'd like to talk about today are maybe not necessarily exactly so what you So things you can do, but things you might not want to do. And things you need to be prepared to do. Okay, okay. so now it's just like working on a car, working on a boat or whatever. Most important thing is, I'm going to go out and change a tire. So what do you do? What's the first thing you do, Christy? You're going to go change a tire. I look up YouTube and I find out how to do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, and that is not what we call approved data, OK? Oh. <laughs> so yeah, and that, that brings a, a really good point. There's a lot of folks out there say, and again, hopefully it's not in medicine, but um, you know, I saw it on YouTube, and so I can do it. Right. OK, the most important thing is, if you're going to work on your aircraft, and this is an, as an aircraft owner, OK, you guys are aircraft owners, I'm an aircraft owner. I'll ask a question. Do you have the parts manual for your aircraft? Yes. Do you have the maintenance manual for your yes. aircraft? Do you have the parts man manual for your engine? Do you have the maintenance manual for your engine? Fail. My a and has that. Right, but you know what? That's a fail. And, what, and as, as a mechanic, as an inspector, I'm going to make sure that you have it. You need to have it. The owner needs to have it. The owner needs Not to the A&P that you now, use? You no, know, the AP that, work, that maintains your aircraft, if, if that's the, the, the way, yeah, they need to definitely have it. Okay, but so now... I'm pretty sure I have it. It's just that it's... Now, here's something I used to... I, I have used, a big stack of books. Right, okay, exactly. books. Books is an interesting thing. Or notebooks. Or that is so, that, I mean, that, that goes with your gray hair, okay? I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> right, right. Okay. <laughs> I'll deserve it. Exactly. So what I would do, I typically do with an owner is I say, listen, you, you will get all the books, the engine manuals, the airframe manuals, and then if you have any unique stuff, say some, some uh, avionics or uh, that kind of stuff, take all those manuals, and I used to say, put it on a CD. Right. And then I started saying, put it on a thumb drive. And now I'm saying... Put it on, put it in the cloud. And the reason is, you're flying from here to Wisconsin, and you break in St. Louis. Where are your manuals? You may have be able yeah. to have the parts, but that mechanic... Back at a CD or that thumb drive back at the or, shop. Or, and right. I, I, I typically throw that stuff in the, in the glove box. Um, but right. the other thing, too, is now you have all the data. So if you're somewhere, the mechanic can't say, hey, I don't have the book. I can't work in your aircraft. You've got the book. It's like, bam, there's everything you need. So again, as an owner, Try to get those okay. things and have them available to you. Put them up on the cloud. Okay, your mechanic has them. Great, your mechanic has them. Why don't you have them? I'll tell you that right now. That's my big thing. If your mechanic has them, you should have them, okay? So again, and in today's world, PDF is absolutely fine. Yeah. Nothing wrong. And it's, it's the best way to store it. So that's a real, that to me is a real big deal is, is now you have the data. How do I change a tire? Go in the book, okay? How do we fly an aircraft? Go in the book. What are the rules? Go in the book. I learned how to fly on YouTube too, though. But <laughs> which is which is uh, which is fabulous. I'm um, kidding. Yeah, disturbing, but Just fabulous. Kidding. <laughs> yeah, Brian Brian Turner, right? Right. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> Just like eating pudding. Um, so. The, uh, the other thing is to have a mentor, okay? You don't want to just do it cold out of the, right out of the box. So if you're going to change a tire, have a mechanic. Have adult supervision. <laughs> yes, have adult supervision. Gotcha. Yeah, turn the, turn the uh, YouTube off, but have adult supervision. Have someone walk, th walk you through it once. Uh, biggest thing is just so, you, A, you don't get hurt. Okay. B, you're using the right tools. 
and that it is airworthy, real important, okay? And what I like owners to do is to be in love with their aircraft. The more they do in their aircraft, the more they learn about their aircraft. Right. I think on your annual this year, we learned that we were t you were taking the back seat apart wrong. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. So now we, because we were unbolting the wrong pieces and it was actually turn up the upholstery a little bit, now it's like, oh, this is the way we're supposed to and be doing it. And we fixed it. Yeah, fixed we it. We learned from it. Yeah, and you learn from oh, it. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And the more you learn from it, the more you're going to start looking oh, at other things. Oh, just in the uh, two and a half years that I've owned the 210, um, you know, I, I think about how, how much I knew about the aircraft when I bought it compared to now. It's like a world of difference. Yeah. 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 Uh, getting in there and, oh, look, we had a hydraulic leak on the, the right brake. Now I know kind of how the whole brake calipers work and everything yeah. else. And what it does, it lets you, it's lets you do a pre-flight that much better. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Now you oh, actually yeah. know what you're looking at. Yeah, they say, oh, if you see fluid, you know, now I know what that fluid is, where it's coming from, what it's doing. Yeah, you, yeah I, I did a pre-flight uh, right before I left on my last trip, and, uh, and I was showing somebody how to do it. I was teaching them. And I had a, a, a big drop of oil on my main, uh, on the front, not mains, but the front landing gear. And it's right underneath the oil change, and we had just did our oil change, so I could check that yep. and see if it was tight. And it was because of going through that experience. Yeah. And that's, that's real helpful, too. It's, it's, you know, sometimes you feel like it's a new, like a new car. You open the hood, you have no idea what's going on in there. Right. But our, actually, the aircraft is kind of cool is you can actually just learn little bits at a, at a time. So actually, it's, it's kind of scary getting in there and learning about it because you're like, wow, that's it. You would think that there would be like a lot more redundancies and this and that when you wind up finding and out. It also, yeah. helps you, it also helps you as a pilot. I've had, I've had things break. I've had right. everything from wrench and failure, magneto failures, alternator, generator, um, stuck valves in flight. And when I'm sitting there in the middle of a failure, like okay, well let's see. This does this. This connected that. Da, da, da. Right. Yeah, we should be good. And uh, it helps with decision making. It helps with decision making and knowing what I have, whether I can climb with power or I'm, I'm going down. So, again, knowing the more you know about it, the more you know as far as propeller systems, engine systems, landing gears, and things like that, it'll help you be a much better pilot. So, again, getting back to preventive maintenance. You can change tires, you can change bulbs, uh, you can do uh, painting, uh, things like that. You can do some upholstery. Um, you can top off fluids. On some of the old fabric airplanes, you can do all sorts of stuff. There's about 30-some-odd uh, items you can do. And again, you can change hoses, which is disturbing. You can change all the hoses in the aircraft except for the hydraulic hoses because I guess they don't want you to leave... They don't want you to leave the landing gear from keep from coming down. But you can so. change the fuel hose, which kind of keeps the engine going. So it's kind of crazy what it is. But the, but the FAA has gone through and listed yeah. um, very specifically what you can yeah, do. What you as the owner operator, again, the FAA FARs are written for everybody from a little Piper Cub to a 787. So what you can do. Now you do your maintenance, right? You change your tire. Then what do you do? Lunch? No. You still have to do logbook entries. No, 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 my mechanic does that. No, you do that. Ah, okay, okay, if you change the oil, you're still responsible under 43 and 91 for doing logbook entries. Well, I'm, I'm just a pilot. Okay, in that case, you'll do logbook entries. Okay? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and, and, and that's just the way it is. Nobody gets out. The other the reason why you don't want to keep up with that is uh, the one I love is um, owner has an aircraft. They come to me for an annual a year later, they have 150 hours on it, and my, the last signature in the book is mine. Oh my. And they've that's got 150. Say, that's what I say, only I don't say it quite that nicely. So yes, it's like, then that's when we have the talk. Go, oh, I changed it. I changed it, and it's like, what'd you change it to? You know, what'd you change it from? So my big deal is, as part of, with the owners, is educating them, this is how you do a logbook entry. And so I'll have them, it's, well, I don't know, it's like, write it down on a piece of paper, and we'll go through it. The other thing we, you can do is once you have a good rapport with your mechanic, your, inspect, your inspector, is you can kind of move on there. And that's another thing is if you're doing owner maintenance, keep a logbook of it. Because you may, when you're flying the 787s and all that stuff and the 797s and whatever they are, because you're going to get that fat cat airline job, <laughs> you may end up wanting to maintain your own super duper airplanes because by that time, you know, the Wong Warrior will be another 30 years old. Oh, yeah. Oh, but she'll, she'll have babied it enough. It's exactly. Yeah. So, but you'll, you may want to maintain your own aircraft, okay, yeah. and without having. So now keep a log, and there's actually logs out there you can buy, of the maintenance you're doing and the time. Because after about 
two, 3,000 hours, you can go to the FAA and say, I have work experience. Oh. Oh, very valuable. When you think, well, I'll never get there. Well, you know what? If I'm 25 or 30, you'd be surprised what you can do in 10 years or 15 years. But it's kind of cool if you're doing if you're doing maintenance and you're learning, again, you're learning about that stuff, you're working with your mechanic, take credit for it. Loggable time. Loggable time. Yes, definitely loggable time. Different kind of time, but definitely log it because you can use it later. It saves you a lot of money in out years. So that's something. That's interesting. I never yeah. thought of that. Yeah. So a lot of folks think, well, it's just changing oil. It's like, well, you know what? Everything you're doing on the aircraft, when you're working with your, with your IA during an annual and that kind of stuff, you're doing more than just changing oil. You're doing different systems, fixing this and that. Write it down and take credit for it. All right, so here's one. Uh, all the uh, pilots who are, are doing videos and mounting cameras all over the place, can they mount cameras? Or do they have to have an <laughs> IA sign off on that? I am not going to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> I believe there's FA guidance on that. There is FA yeah, guidance. Yeah, FA guidance. Now, what I do is when, when I mount cameras, uh, I'll actually have a spring scale, and I'll, I'll mount it. And then I pull test it and that kind of stuff. Uh, and actually, but give, you're an IA, so you get yeah. to sign off on it anyway. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of it was kind of cool as a pilot. As a pilot, I don't see what the big deal is with this maintenance because it's free for me. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, think about it. Okay. So I, and again, after you're a mechanic for two years or for three years, two three years, um, then you can apply for an inspection authorization. Again, something kind of cool in your out years is now you can maintain your own little fleet if you want to. So again, take credit for it. Biggest thing is um, find, a, find a mentor, a mechanic, stick with them. If they're good, stick with them, work with them, and learn. And log it. Log any kind of time. It's great, great stuff to do. If someone's, doing, uh, someone's taking an engine apart or some, some, someone's doing something unique, stick your nose in there. Try to help out or at least watch what's going on. It's kind of cool when you take an engine apart, when a pilot's there and they're like, oh, that's what that does. This is what happens. So it's kind of cool. Um, we've had some, we've taken some things apart that are quite, um, when parts explode and break and all that, it's kind of fun too to take apart and do an autopsy on something. Then you understand why that hap and why that happens. that can happen. In yeah, so, and, and what the ramifications. So it's really just education, education. But again, logbook entries, uh, there's real good guidance in 43 and 91. Uh, in part 43, Appendix A, there's a list of the things you can do. And if it looks like some, hey, that's this, you know, I'd like to change tires, go to your mechanic um, and your IA or whatever and say, hey, this is what I'm, I need to do, what do I need to look at, this, that, and the other thing. And again, parts manuals, maintenance manuals, um, those kinds of things, you should, should have all that stuff. In today's technology, it's totally portable. Yeah, easy. Totally portable. Well, Bill, thank you very much. I appreciate all the uh, great advice. and. Uh, I like the idea of putting all those um, manuals and everything on the cloud, not just the thumb drive. Yeah. So that's great. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. And if you like it, share, subscribe, like, and we'll see you next time in the hangar.